What does your personal meditation practice look like today? Oh, it looks like so many things. I love that question. So when I wake up in the morning, first thing I take a moment before I do all of the things to just sit there and be grateful to get in touch with myself, my day to set my intention. Um, sometimes I will be awoken by my little son coming in. He's currently six and, you know, looking me right in the face, asking some kind of question, like what can he have for breakfast or what can he do? And so I just take a moment with him. From there, I typically do a more formal practice in the middle of the day using often muse focused attention, because that's kind of my, my, go to. Um, and then as things come up in the day, I'll bring in a meditation practice to help me deal with whatever's arising. So, you know, I might feel my shoulders increasing in their tension. I might, you know, be triggered by my husband. Um, and then I will bring in those practices and tools that you and I have talked about as you train, you know, as you sit there and train on the mat and you don't have to be sitting cross-legged when you do your meditation, but when you sit there and train, you have those resources at your ready when you need them, when, when you're about to get angry at your kid, when your husband annoys you, when whatever it is. And then in the evening, I will do a formal practice practice as I lie in bed. Um, and then I'll often do a muse meditation to help me fall asleep, um, just to kind of cap off the day in the most delicious of ways. Do you, do you actually wear the, the device when you sleep or do you just listen to it on the app, uh, from your phone? How do you do it, uh, to help you go to sleep? I go back and forth. So I'm actually a very, very good sleeper and I don't typically need help falling asleep. Um, I just listen to it because I love it. And so sometimes I will just listen. Sometimes I'll wear it and track my night's sleep because it's wonderful. I went through a period of waking up in the middle of the night. And for that, wearing my muse throughout the night was invaluable because when I would wake back up again, the muse would wake up with me and then bring back in the same meditation that helped me fall asleep in the first place. And so, you know, what should have been a miserable period of, of being awake in the middle of the night just became like a lovely wake up, listen to some audio, magically fall back asleep. It was incredibly powerful. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, sleep, I've, oh my God, we could talk for hours and hours on sleep and, and I teach a lot about sleep in my master classes to cancer patients, the importance of a good night high quality sleep, especially getting into that deep sleep state. Um, I mean, majority of the studies show, you know, we should be getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep. That's kind of the sweet spot, right? For mental health, for physical health, you know, we got to get into that deep, steep, deep sleep state, which is where autophagy happens. And, you know, we can actually clean up uh, some of the cellular waste that's going on in the body and clean up the cancer cells. So like sleep is essential. And I know so many people struggle with sleep as I used to, I didn't take it very serious um, until probably the last seven or eight years, maybe, maybe a little longer now I've taken it more seriously um, and, and made like created a, you know, a routine, right? And it's getting that routine dialed in. And I know if I do that routine every night, I'm most likely 90% of the time I'm going to sleep good. Let's say 80% of the time, time I'm going to sleep good. Um, you know, 10%, some things might come up. I might wake up a few too many times. Um, and, you know, 10%, uh, who knows? You never know what happens. Sometimes I get just amazing sleep. But I'd say it's a good, good practice, a good quality sleep, roughly seven and a half hours every night right now. It's like what my, because my, I track it with the whoop. So it tells me actually how many hours I get every night. Um, not how many hours you're in bed. That's totally different, right? I'm in bed nine hours most nights and nine hours gives me seven and a half hours of sleep. So one distinction that I think is important for people to understand that just because you're in bed for eight hours that you might be getting six hours of sleep. And actually the studies show if you have less than seven on an ongoing basis, your all cause mortality risk goes up like significantly. So it's important to track it with something like Muse or, or whatever device you're using. But you know, the, the thing for me with like the, the, the sleep, using this to help people sleep, I think is, is a great tool because, um, 
you know, you want to use whatever can help if you struggle with sleep. Like me, because I have such a routine for so long, I tried sleeping with it and it actually disrupted my sleep. So I can't sleep with it or else I'd have to like add it into my routine, you know, every single day until it became part of my routine. But like if, if you already have a really good routine, you already sleep really good. And then I add it in, it actually messed up my sleep. So I just, you know, that's kind of what happened to me, unfortunately. Yeah. So if you, for those who have poor sleep already, um, it can be incredibly helpful to help you sleep. If you already have great sleep, you don't need it to help the sleep function. Um, we did a study with Dr. Adrian Owen, um, and he's a famous British neuroscientist, and he showed out of a population of 150 people with sleep su who suffered from poor sleep, they had a 20% increase in quality of sleep wearing the muse overnight. So they fell asleep faster, they tend to stay asleep, and even have reported better dreams. So it, you know, Muse is very customizable, so you can use it in the way that works well for you, whether it's just listening to something to help you fall asleep or wearing the band to really kind of supercharge your ability to sleep well when you have poor sleep to begin with. Thanks for listening to the Nathan Crane Podcast. If you found value in today's podcast, please share it with others. Subscribe to catch future episodes and leave a rating and a review. For more information or to connect with Nathan, check him out online at www.nathancrane.com and follow him on Facebook and YouTube at Nathan Crane. Until next time, this has been the Nathan Crane Podcast.